Auzubillahiminashshaytuanirrajim, bismillahirrahmanirrahim, astaghfirullah rabbim in kulli zambir wa atubu lehi. Assalamu alaikum, ji ayanum, pakhair aghle, ni hao, chunu shumbe, washmale, ola, bonjour, priviet, kaifa hal, hale shumat chatore, ahlan wa salan marhaba, buna, mucho, gracias, suavi, abhali kare aya, and hosh kyal din. And thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for tuning into PETV World. You're definitely watching Ramazan Pakistan with my very wonderful, amazing, very well learned colleague. She happens to be Miss Hajra Sati and I happen to be Shazad Hassan Khan and we hope and pray that everybody out there is doing wonderfully well and that you're ready to listen to whatever we have to share for the betterment of ourselves and for the betterment of, of our viewers as well. Ladies and gentlemen, first things first, I really need to ask my colleague over here whether how she's doing. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, how are you doing today? Wa Alaikum Assalam, thank you so much for asking, I'm good. Well, I think right. so far so good and uh, to be very honest, you know, there are so many things which, you know, one thinks about that, okay, you know, I really need to do that, I really need to cope right. up with that. And, you know, when you get that free time, you really want to do that. But right. I think while you're fasting, it actually just gets right. difficult. You know, you're like, okay, whatever I'm supposed to do, I will do it after I open my fast and not before that because right. I just want to kind of get rid of whatever the, you know, the, the, the kind of thought process you are in and then kind of continue with the rest of the day right after I open my right. fast as well. But what about you? How do you kind of go... Uh, after all of those chores you're supposed to do, do you kind of procrastinate that, okay, yaar, roza khul jai, kar lungi? I think it's a mix of both. I do procrastinate a lot, yeah. sometimes and sometimes not. Uh, but yes, of course, you know, before uh, iftar, I don't think so. I do have that as a sort of energy to, you know, complete my task. And I usually keep them after the iftari, but um, then uh, they're always pending, you know, because I don't have energy anymore. <laughs> and, and just very quickly, you know, because we are only almost 12 yeah. or probably 11 days short of right. the Choti Eid as well or right. Fitr ladies and gentlemen right. and you know now you know while, while you're actually out on the roads as well and that right. too after Iftar it's just rushy it looks right. like it feels like as if you know you're driving uh, probably in the daytime as well right. so now how do you kind of calculate okay that you know if, you're, if I'm supposed to go over here you know the tailor might right. take this much time so how do you manage the time because after Iftar you really do not have a bigger window you know That's to do whatever you're supposed to do so how do you plan on things? Right, right. So um, usually what happens is like uh, yesterday I went home and my mom uh, asked me to take her to the bazaar because she wanted to get her things done. Wow. Um, and after Aftar, you know, she says that I don't have energy left to do those. And before Aftar, I don't have energy, <laughs> but you know, she is my mother. I have to comply by her demands, of course. <laughs> and that is how things work. What about you? Exactly. And I seriously kind of want to uh, back this up as well. You know, with me, uh, it is very different because right. I'm the only son who actually lives with my parents. Oh, yeah. And I've always been been taught by the bar nasib and uh, right. you know and I've seen that I've experienced that in my life ladies and gentlemen that for whoever you know may you be a son or a daughter but whoever kind of looks after their parents they are blessed by Allah Almighty no matter what happens and you really do not have to look back at you know what you were doing previously because as soon as you know you you start to help your parents and you know that they are getting elder mm -hmm. uh, you really need to kind of be there for them because you know That's you are that hope you are that part of me for them as well and please make sure that you play your role as such you know which is defined and described by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said I'm going to say it in Urdu as well that if I'm standing in the prayer and my mother gives me a voice then I'm standing in the prayer and I'm listening to my mother and then I'm going to do the prayer and then so ladies and gentlemen I think this is your chance to actually earn heaven over here on earth as well and with that let's right. get started with the conversation as well right. ladies and gentlemen we're very lucky obviously you know, just yesterday we told you that we have been talking about uh, where, you know, we kind of shared the Islamic values and the ethos and the ethics behind that as well. And since it was a longer right. conversation and we seriously wanted to dig in a little more as well, we did share a few aspects of it. But today we're going to continue from where we did stop. We're very lucky that we've been joined by Mr. Imran Sadhu Saab. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi. How are you? I'm absolutely perfect. And sir, I absolutely like it how you're matching with our set today as well. And, you know, you always have a matching whale uh, for, uh, uh, you know, the show as well and with your kurta. So I love it. I love the fashion sense of yours as well. And it's beautiful to have you over here. Thank you. Thank you for your... Uh, appreciate <laughs> Thank you very much for having these aesthetics to yourself as well. I seriously love it. But alongside him, ladies and gentlemen, obviously earlier, uh, prior 
to this we have been actually starting our day uh, with Nathim Akbul as well but today we seriously wanted to get started with uh, a few uh, surahs from the Quran Park as well so ladies and gentlemen for that we are very lucky that we have been joined by Kari Muhammad Farooq Sahib as well sir assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sir bismillah kijiye kya sunayenge aaj aap hame a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ma kana Muhammadun aba So thank you very much uh, for doing the honors for us and for our viewers as well. And ladies and gentlemen, to continue, you know, there's this one thing which I've always wished for. I don't know. I mean, it might be my wishful thinking, but this is certainly something I want the government to look into it as well. And, you know, so a humble request for each and every one of you who are out there. And if you are the ones who can actually bring about the change, I really want the Mausins to kind of have this practice of credit to themselves as well. So that, for example, if they are calling for the prayer as well you know if it is a blissful noise or if a blissful sound i think it will be more attractive for the people who are actually uh, kind of going to pray at the mosque as well main balki ye chhota sa sawal aap se puch leta hu kai sahab meri dil ki khwahish hai ke jitne bhi hamare mauzin hote hain masajid mein main chahta hu ki unki bhi awaazein agar hum ye dekh le ke thodi si khoobsurat honge jis time wo azan de to thoda aur sunne mein behtar lage kyunki jab main chhota tha to koi hamari jo masjid mein mauzin the unki azan se allah maaf kare aisa bola aksar main subah dar jata tha کہ یار کا بات تھوڑی بہتر ہونی چاہیے آپ اس کے بارے میں کیا رائے رکھتے ہیں جی اس چیز کا خاص اہتمام کرنا چاہیے کہ ہماری آزان خوبصورت ہو اور پھر سپیشلی ہماری نماز خوبصورت ہو اس میں کرات خوبصورت ہو تاکہ لوگ اس کو سن کے جو ہے نا وہ کوشش کریں کہ ہم ہر نماز میں شامل ہوں یہ بہت اہم جو ہے نا جزاک اللہ کاری صاحب سلیلی سے جیلمن آئی ایکسی پوز دی سیم قویشن ٹو کاری صاحب اوپر ہیر اور کاری صاحب سید دیٹ یس اوبیسی ایٹ ایس ویری امپورٹن فور اس تو کائنڈ اف لوک انٹو ایٹ ایس ویل اور اگر ہم کن فائنڈ دی پیپل ہو ایکسی آر گوڈ بے دی ووکلز اور دیٹ تو ایف دی سٹارٹ تو کائنڈ اف کال فور دی پریئر ایس ویل ایٹ ویل سرٹنلی فیل نائسے فور دی پیپل ہو گوئن ٹو اٹین دی پریئر ایس ویل سو لیلی سے جیلمن ناو کمی You know, let's start from where we did stop. I hope you remember that as well. And then kind of continuing with the 
ethos, the ethics and the Islamic values as well. And you did speak about the order and how we really need to kind of comply to that. Yes, so uh, I did talk about the values and uh, there is a hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Buni al-Islam wa khamsin that Islam has five basic pillars. <coughs> So they, they, these pillars basically, they actually they have the they are the basic attributes on which uh, Islam is the the building of Islam is uh, resting upon. The first one is iman. So the first value that we we talked about was iman, and then namaz, and then roza, and then uh, hajj, hajj zakat. and zakat. So and pretty much. Uh, when we enter into Ramadan, uh, Ramadan is just like, uh, you know, this is, uh, the, the, the Ramadan is uh, the short form of life. It gives you all those messages, all those things that, that you have to practice in, in, on the rest of your life. Like, for example, uh, with the, uh, the, the Ramadan starts with uh, sighting of the moon and your life also starts uh, when you are small and then you know you have the, uh, then you know uh, you, uh, you uh, the rosa also starts with the sighting of the sun um, and then uh, you keep fast uh, you, you start uh, n uh, you know feeling the urge of, of food and, of thirst. Food and yeah. thirst and then you cry and your mom gives you the milk and this is how what happens when you start feeling the urge and then you do sabr and then you, <coughs> you pray and uh, you, you, you have to control yourself. So life also den denotes life is a, is, is a bigger form of this, the same rosa. Right. So coming to the ethics, uh, what does Iman tells us? Iman tells us that there is no God but Allah. one God. Yeah. This is the basic message of Iman. And then uh, the second message is that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his messenger and the last of the messengers. There is no messenger coming after him. And the book, uh, Quran is the last of the books and this Ummah is the last of the Ummah. And then you have to, you have, and then there comes a whole system. Then you have to have faith on on Malaika. Then you have to f have faith on 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 uh, the 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 whole of the system. Uh, so how does it translate into your ethical life? How does? So whenever you are going to have iman, your uh, the the eye of your heart goes open and it y you you actually start feeling that you are being watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala initially and when it, this iman actually starts uh, starts improving what happens is you start uh, your life becomes a, uh, an example of that you are s watching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like it and this this condition is known as ihsan all right but how would Iman actually translate into good deeds? How? So, when you've, you've start, started to believe in this system that, you know, the sun and the moon and this whole of the universe has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then uh, you'll, the first question is, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. wants us to do? So then, because you believe in the book, your 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 actions and your intentions start uh, start getting imp uh, straight. I'm sorry, but uh, you know, right over here, I seriously wanted to ask because while you were actually explaining, and it was a wonderful explanation, and you know, I think I am at the stage of life where I do understand this as well. But there's sim a simple question, and that is, do you think that we really is it because of the fear of Allah Almighty that, okay, Allah is watching us? Or is it because of the power of Iman that we comply to that? It's the power of Iman. It's not the fear of Allah Almighty. Uh, it is also the fear <laughs> of Allah. Okay, so it's both of them. Both of them. True. Uh, initially, it is, you know, whosoever you love, you also fear him as well. 
that he doesn't get angry to true uh, right. abu se dar lagta hai mujhe yeah because you, you love him <laughs> so so this is this is and this is this is part and parcel of fear and love like there is a there's a hadith that tells al al iman u bain al khauf wa rija iman is between fear and and belief uh, or you know uh, manifestation so then you know you you st- when you start finding allah you find him in your prayers now the ethical value <coughs> of the second thing is that is namaz what ethics does it teach you you have to bow only to allah almighty allah subhanahu wa taala you do not bow to the creation right. you do not bow to anyone. anyone so this is this makes you upright you know this whole of this universe your iman tells you and then you bow to allah and this is where you give you 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 you, you, you your deeds actually uh, manifest that uh, because you are bound to, bound to him you are not going to do anything that he doesn't want and, and you are going to do all those things amar bil maruf wa nahi anil munkar and sir in addition to that since we you, you actually spoke about namaz as well and it obviously teaches us discipline but there is a stronger valuable message in it as well and that is that you know once you commit to allah almighty that you know there's it's it's only you and there's nobody beyond or probably except you as well i think when we are living as humans in this world as well i think haja what we really need to kind of believe in is that even if there's any other superpower right next to us if there's a stronger person right next to us we are never going to comply to whatever misconduct he or she might pushes us to do as well right. i think that's what namaz teaches and that's the value we really need to instill within our own selves as muslims but do you think that there's that islam actually gives us this space the god forbid if it's a difficult situation if it's a do or die situation you really can kind of go beyond or probably use words wisely and get out of that situation even though that you believe in allah almighty that he is the supreme he is the one we follow but god forbid if it's a condition where you really kind of have to put that value at the back end and then kind of create something of your own that yaar main ab is masle se nikal jaun phir kar lenge inshallah and and also you know that there is this global debate about shared ethics and shared values um and obviously you know in order to uh, come on a shared valued platforms and we have to see from where we are looking so for example we are li- living in a muslim society in islamic society right yeah. um and also um so we we will look from the ethics from the islamic perspective here uh, if the ethics is coming from a non muslim perspective what does the islam says about that so if it correlates with islamic values they are welcomed okay. but if right. it contradicts with islamic values then you have to stand your I'm ground i'm afraid I, i i'll have to abide by the islamic laws and that is what happened a gaya and jab ladai mein waqt e namaz qibla ruh ho ke sajda rez hui qom e ijaz something like that so iqbal says that you know this this namaz or this asala this is a time bound duty what is the message whenever this the the, the you see this uh, sun at this angle to the earth you will you will uh, offer fajr then you'll offer so you know around the clock five times a day you are going to come and talk to allah right you are going to have a conversation with allah and how are you going to have conversation with allah you are going to recite his kalam mm-hmm. Uh, into in the prayers and you know remind yourself of what allah says in quran and this is this is the, this is the almi of our uh, nation that we do not understand quran mm-hmm. and that is the real thing that our ethical values are going down down and down and down so uh, and so and is it is it because that that we do not really stand our ground because you know i seriously want my question to be answered tum khwab hue tarik e quran ho ke muazzaz the zamane mein musalman musalman ho ke so so namaz is the real starter of the ethical values you do not you, you do not abide by any rule or any regulation unless or until it is according to the quran and sunnah and that is what our, what our constitution also translates for us right. exactly. that no law should be made repugnant to quran and sunnah and then yeah and thank you very much for saying that because in addition to that i would certainly want to uh, add over here ladies and gentlemen that once you actually have this habit of offering your prayers as well you certainly there are so many things which will come to your mind you'll be like yaar namaz padni abhi you know i i don't think i should do it right. and you know gradually you right. actually 
pace up on that as well. But sir, in, in addition to that, where you actually spoke about, first of all, Rosa, then you spoke about Namaz. Let's talk about Zakat. How do you think Zakat actually instills any value? You know, there are, there, as I said, there are cross swords during life. Like when you've got Iman, you know, the, this thing is time bound and that thing is bound with the level of wealth okay. that you will have. So as soon as you reach a level of wealth, there is another cro crossword, there is an another signal, you know, there is another order, red light, now you have to pay zakat. So you have to stop, think, look, now I've, I've got these, uh, this wealth with me and I have to take care of, yeah. the, um, of the people who are less fortunate than I am. And then after zakat, the, the, the next ethic, ethical value is when, you, when you've got into namaz, you've got into uh, the, uh, oh, the zakat, now comes saum. One, one in around the year, one month, you start, uh, you know, there are two kinds of, uh, human nature has two uh, different uh, uh, sides. One is angelic side, and the other is uh, uh, the darker side, the the animal animalistic side. All right. right. So this, what Allah wants is to Allah does not want us to leave our animal animalistic side or our angelic side. Allah wants us to optimize between these two things. Hmm. You How can the two you exist you not, together? You don't, you not kill your animal animal instincts inside of you. Rather, you control them. Oh, it's what do, just like how do you refer to the animal side? I mean, this is for, for me to understand or for our viewers to understand. I think it's really important to elaborate upon this. Uh, what do you mean by saying the animal side as well? So, yeah. So, uh, look at this. Just imagine. Uh, in, human, in, uh, in a human being, all kind of attributes are available. Uh, in what, are, what attributes are available in non-living things? There's fire inside of him isn't it? There's iron inside of him. It comprises of all the elements, 99 or now more elements that are found inside of human body. Right. But no whatsoever order, they don't have to comply by order, all the non-living things. Right. And then comes the animal, animals, uh, the, uh, animals like... Uh, it does not comply to... Like snake, yeah. like lion, you know. Uh, so. Uh, uh, lion is very, you know, powerful, powerful and brave. Uh, snake is deadly. So <laughs> all these, all these attributes are right there inside True. of every human being. So this rosa actually helps you to train that animal inside of you. Wonderful. And uh, you know, although you, you you might become powerful, but you have to you you will not use that power. Against uh, the weak? Against, uh, 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 against the oppressed. Okay. Not, not oppressed with this power. True. Animals do not have this instinct, this understanding. But humans do. When they get powerful, they have to control their power in order to use it for good. Only against the evil, against the odds. Yeah. There you can use the power. So, so what does this Rosa do? It helps you to train by leaving the halal things as well. You, uh, right. By choice, you do not eat from sunset to uh, from sunrise to sunset, and this is how uh, the ethical uh, values get uh, get tra you get training out of. You know, once I wor <laughs> once uh, you know, I uh, my friend uh, um, uh, friend's friend bought an okab. Uh, you know, what do you call okab? Falcon. Falcon, Falcon. Okay. and. He his he 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 trained that okab for uh, for uh, uh, shikar, right. and what happened is uh, th there were two people they were training it all the time, and they the duty was that they would not let that uh, bird sleep for one month oh. at all. Yeah, and they are going to give them less food. After one month, what happened? What used to happen was one person is going to hold it during the for two hours then the other person is going to come he is going to rest and he is going to and as soon as he tries to sleep uh, this person so so imagine this if you are going to train your body not to eat 
you not to satisfy your physical needs for whole of the month uh, during the day there is a chance that you are going to train yourself for other great attributes that you are going to make Wonderful. of and this is going to make you ethical whenever you are going to be uh, you, you are going to have temptations for example if somebody comes and uh, you know bribes you so this is a human uh, nature that one can very easily get bribed mm -hmm. but if he's a good muslim he's offering five times a day and taqwa and iman comes in and laal lakum tattaqun uh, the, the reason why Rosa has become, become obligatory is, is, is taqwa. So what will happen is you are going to refrain from all uh, of the wrongdoings. All, all the wrongdoings because you've got, uh, you, you have become habitual of uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, abstaining uh, because of order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is hajj? and then the Hajj. Hajj also gives you very, very deep down, you know, a very strong message, yes. I'll, I'll be quick, I'll try to be quick. What Hajj gives you is, it gives you a whole story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Hmm. You know, Sacrifice? Uh, in the Salati, that my prayer, my, my, my sacrifice is all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what happened was, when he, he, he had to leave his son all alone uh, in, in Makkah, the second thing what he do, did was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also was prepared to sacrifice his, his son, but Allah did not take that sacrifice in, yeah. in actual, but he ordered it. Similarly, when shaitan came three times over there, mm. uh, when he was going for sacrificing his son, uh, you know, this is a whole of the story, he did not uh, lend an ear to shaitan. Similarly, his mother, when, when she learned that Allah has given him an order to leave them alone over there. So she said, Hasbun Allah wa al wakeel. And then, you know, the story of Ibrahim when he stood against uh, the, the oppressor, the tyrant, uh, you know, uh, who were doing idolatry. So, you know, this story actually gives us uh, the purpose of life, that True. anything that you are going to do, even sacrifice yourself, sacrifice your everything uh, everything including your wealth your uh, uh, you know your children uh, yep. not in uh, not, not in uh, you know apparent terms rather than in uh, in, in spiritual terms right. that you put your sons and daughters uh, go and you know uh, practice the religion of Allah wow that's wonderful sir thank you very much for giving us or in fact reminding us about all the Islamic values because when we talk about namaz ladies and gentlemen obviously it will give us discipline when we talk about hajj obviously it teaches us about sacrifice when we talk about fasting it actually it is to train yourself and to abstain yourself from all the wrongdoings as well I think that these are the basic values fundamental values of the religion Islam as well and each and every one of us kind of start to follow all of these we will be a good Muslim we will have heaven over here we will have heaven here in the year after as well so very quickly we actually have to head out towards a short break but uh, first Kari sahab ek achhi si naat suna de please saaye mein tumhare hain kis mat ye ہماری ہے قربان دل و جان ہے کیا شان تمہاری ہے کیا پیش کروں تم کو John. 
بھی تمہاری ہے گو لاکھ برے ہیں ہم کہلاتے ہیں کہلاتے ہیں تمہارے ہیں ایک نظر کرم کرنا یہ عرض ہماری ہے ایک نظر کرم کرنا یہ عرض ہماری ہے The second ten days of Ramadan are to seek forgiveness. I seek Allah's forgiveness from all my sins and I ask for repentance. Sayings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He who does not respect elders, does not have mercy on children, does not commend what is good, and does not forbid what is evil, is not one of us. The second ten days of Ramadan are to seek forgiveness. I seek Allah's forgiveness from all my sins and I ask for repentance. and we had a really lovely conversation in the first segment and now uh, we are heading towards the second segment and I wanted to ask Shazad that uh, have you ever had, uh, had sorry uh, resolutions in your life? Well, I've never had resolutions right. because, you know, initially, obviously, I thought about new resolutions, all of that, what I wanted to do in my life. And then there was a point where I realized that, you know, that these resolutions don't work. And, right. you know, because even if I am to aim for something that I need to achieve for my own self and for my own betterment, and if I am going to say that, okay, you know, from next right. week onwards, I'm going to start right. doing that, this will never happen. You know, because what I have 
when I actually thought about it, ladies and gentlemen, what you really need to do is that you really need to have that intent in you. And if you have that intent, you there and then going to decide that, okay, you know, if I am to pray five times a day, right. I really need to start from the very point where I actually had this thought in my mind that, okay, yaar, namaz padle nahi chahiye. all right, let's get up, let's do it. And right. only then you can achieve it. If you put it on to, for, for example, that, okay, you know, I'm going to think about it for a week's time and then do it. I don't think that it's going to work. I mean, it might work for a lot of people, but it never worked for me because right. it was a generic statement. I so think, I'm going to take I my think, word back. I think that's right. And I will back you up with that research because there is a research, scientific research, wow. which says that um, a lot of resolutions fail. I am forgetting the exact number. I think two, uh, third quarters of that, something like that. And why they fail? Because, you know, um, they are very much, you know, into, uh, uh, and it has to do with, you know, the power of intent because right. the intent is lacking in that. Yeah. And that is the, you know, topic of our um, second, segment. Second. And, and ladies and gentlemen, you know, just to kind of share what, uh, you know, the power of intent can actually right. do, it can actually help millions and millions of right. people. There's this one gentleman and uh, we seriously want to share his story with you all as well. Please go ahead, take a look at this very inspiring video and then we'll definitely talk about it. So ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman uh, who you can actually see in front of you on your television screens happens to be one of those people who've actually, uh, he's first of all obviously from Bahrain and has taken care of hundreds of orphans in his lifetime. And today is the day where, you know, for that intent which he had probably, you know, 30 years or 40 years ago that he actually wanted to look after the orphans within, uh, you know, I mean, people who actually surround them. He actually kind of did groom them. He gave them education. He gave them food. He provided them with shelter, obviously with the blessings of Allah Almighty. And all of those people actually came together to thank this gentleman as well. So what they, what you're watching right on screen is that you know that they're actually sharing his name on the screen as well and are saying thank you each and each and every one of these individuals which you're going to see in this video as well. So the gentleman initially is very shocked, you know. So you you can see him smiling and he's saluting that okay, you know, thank you very much. That's nice. But this is not where it ends, oh. and you know, this is the power of intention. So imagine, you know, even over here within Pakistan, ladies and gentlemen, we really need to revive this culture where we thank people. Right. For example, Abdul Sattar, Idi uh, Saab. We really need to kind of contribute towards what he has done. We really need to kind of share. And you know, his eyes are filled with tears. All of a sudden, when he realizes that it's not stopping anytime sooner. So imagine, you know, from, from the new burger to his name and picture oh. and recognizing the efforts he's brought in for all of those people. And towards the end, if we can fast forward it as well, you know, towards the end for all of those children, I don't think that majority of the people might have made it to this very venue as well. But majority of the people, ladies and gentlemen, who he has groomed over the period of lifetime, his lifetime and who he has looked after. Imagine, you know, the cars standing left and right parked. You know, they're just thanking him. And all of these people who are right in front uh, of his car are the people who've actually uh, gotten that education, who've right. gotten that shelter. And he's been that one person who's actually provided them with that. That's and right. that's the power of attention. That's how big of a change you can bring. Hundreds of people educated, having their own families, contributing to the society, adding to the economy of the country by just the intent of one particular person. And that's something which we seriously want to pick up on as well. So let's kind of start to uh, start talking about it, how, how the power of intention can actually bring about a positive change because we're seriously talking about positive intentions only today as well. <laughs> right. You know, there are a lot of intentions. We seriously do not want to get in the different genres of intention as right, well. Right. But today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about it, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by uh, Sayyid Muhammad Anis Saab. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, yeah. sir, we have shared an example. <laughs> yes. And we are only left with 10 minutes. So, we want you to kind of elaborate on the power of intention. The whole idea of uh, bringing this topic uh, here again, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, for the limited, the thing is that uh, human being have unlimited power right. and uh, it's not like if you look at all the Torah, Bible, mm -hmm. every segment of any religion, they come to one conclusion, then after God, that's a human. Right. right. And There's and no and disagreement. That's also backed by the quantum physics which exactly. says there'll be yes. a packet of energies, right? Yes. And if you look at the physical, uh, phys uh, physical side, right. neurological, because right. that's my subject, and 100 billion neurons human being carries, right? Yeah. So, which is almost equal to the stars of the world, the universe actually. So, <laughs> but question is, I'm going to ask you, when it comes to resolutions of our basic issues, yep. 
we see only 10 to 15 percent. It's hardly we can resolve. What's wrong? Exactly. And thank you very much for asking this question because yeah. I certainly was in that state of mind just yesterday because I was being looted by somebody. <laughs> I was like, Allah me, why did that happen to me? And then I was like, all of a sudden, okay, I'm not complaining, but thank you very much, whatever condition I'm in as of now. Right. But sir, I was not able to find that resolve until the time okay. I slept. And you know, <coughs> and ladies and gentlemen, this is very important that half of the time you really need to sleep over on to things as well so that you really kind of find that resolve as well. But I was not actually able to have a resolve okay, for myself. Two things. One thing is where, which is the base of the root cause of thing is the limiting beliefs of environment and genetics. Because we're trying to resolve our issues with those mindset which is already established in our mind. Yeah. So unless we empty our thoughts and let it go. But that's difficult. No, that's that, you see, difficult. that's not the easy. Yeah. And that is the work of subconscious. Yep. You know, so you have to work on subconscious mind to resolve those issues. So thank you very much for saying that because my very learned colleague over here just at the beginning actually said that, you know, it, it's really important for us to be, to have that consciousness in the first place to make sure that we have that power, that right power of intent as well. Mm. Right. So how do we train our consciousness? Okay. And, and what is the difference between the intent and the consciousness yes. for that matter? The thing is, now mostly scholars went there and a lot of whole world scholars and they come to one conclusion. That is? That divine intention is invisible power in this universe. All right. So once you connect with that intent, then your intention will resolve by itself. So, so I think what we are trying to refer <laughs> There's a little to is, bigger picture, you know. So I think what we are trying to refer to is that um, uh, Of course. I, I think I that's, that's what it is. Exactly. But sir, now very quickly, you know, because we are talking about consciousness and our intentions as well, but half of the time what happens is that, you know, we humans are weak. Of course. Even the Quran tells us. Yes, even, of course, even, yes. Even the hadith uh, tells us that, you know, that, that yes. humans are weak. Right. But what happens is that, you know, we have this habit of forecasting. Mm -hmm. And when right. we forecast and God forbid things do not look like as they should, exactly. we start to kind of pale away as well. And then we kind of start to feel more weaker as well. And yes, we're like, Allah, what's going And all of a sudden we are in doubt. And that's where, Allah, that's the kind of condition or position Allah does not want us to be in. We should never be doubting that as well. Exactly. So how do we connect with that and intent so, where so, we're never in doubt? So, so, the wind dies put it this way, uh, very beautifully. It says every discomfort is misalignment with God intent. All right. Simple thing, okay, you know, explain what Allah in wants, the universe. The simple, actually, the, with limited time, you can ex explanation in in front of us. When you see COVID, right? Yeah. Right. We resolve within a th three three years. Whole world come to one conclusion then we have to come to resolve that. We resolve it. I mean, I still, I still think <laughs> yes, whether yeah. we, I, I don't no, think we, that it was mean, us who resolved it. I mean, it was Allah Almighty kind of. Of, of course, of course. Oh, okay. yes. But human intention, everyone, every country. So, so put is, country. is that linked to the intention of one person, as you mentioned, or it is, is it linked to the millions of people or the kuch group out yoga, there? Yoga, because right. that's how we behaved. No, no, exactly. Right, because it, you, you mentioned COVID, you know, and when entire world decides that we have to finish that. Exactly. Then, so is it look... Is so it, the God shows his intention, right? Right. To bring everyone together. Right. And every country, every human being put his intention with the intention of God. Right. That you have to be Thank together. you very much. Right? That's a and wonderful point. And we have resolved it. Right. Yeah. And this is the rule I'm saying is the basic rule. is very simple basic rule. You can apply on every segment of your life and you will find the resolution, but not with the same subconscious mind. You know, why it's not happening? Right, right. The basic rule is it takes time. All right, right. so is it, is it for us to then say that, okay, you know, this is what Allah, uh, uh, you know, wanted us to do? Or, no, no. Or this is what we did wrong you know, and then we really need to do it correct and see, that to according to Allah's You will. have to find yourself in the way that you can... I can explain the simple thing is in uh, there's a st stimulus, right? Yep. You mm -hmm. see something mm -hmm. yep. and there's a gap on waiting your response. And this space is for you to resolve it. True. People wait when you see that, uh, you know, cab on the gutter is 
empty. Nobody cares, right? Yeah, there's a man. But one person there. shows up, so no. And he been. put his intention there. So as he put uh, his intention that what needs to that be I'm going to fix it. So I'm saying that every person is saying, oh, I'm going to be leader for this whole Pakistan. It's not. The main intention is what in, in your front to resolve. Thank you very that much for saying that. But sir, do you think that alone uh, t intention can actually solve a everything? Yes. Well, you might need a few other things no, as no, well. No, I mean, no, just uh, having no, the intention uh, no, and not uh, moving uh, no, a single no. hand. So, so you know, for example, if I decide, okay, I'm going to fix Pakistan and I sit no, on no, the sofa. No. But you if think you have, it's going if to have no, a no, good no. intent, Allah will clear up the exactly. you know, way for you. Uh, no. So your intention is you have to put your part in it. Indeed. Right? Thank you and very much for yeah, saying that. That, 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 that was that, the that most important the aspect. To put your part in it. Yes. So the only thing is, okay, now, you know, are you the leader of the whole thing? No, it's not. But you need to be part of it. Too. So as long as we are part to bring this country at the highest level, then everyone need to put his part. All right. Thank you very much for saying that, that everybody needs to uh, play their role. Everybody needs to chip in their part as well. But sir, very, very quickly, because I, um, you know, I believe, I'm an avid believer that, you know, each and every individual I surround mm -hmm. myself with have good intentions. But yes. what happens is that half of the time we certainly have not trained our personalities to an extent where we cannot judge whether we're going to uh, prioritize our ego first or our intention first. How do we train ourselves where, you know, if we are well-wishers, we think good for people, that we certainly do not let any other feeling come into it with, because of which we are unable to fulfill our intentions, simple, positive ones. Very simple three rules. People say seven rules, but I go, I, give me time. Shortcut. Very simple, very shortcut. Not, it's not shortcut. <laughs> it is the base of seven rules. All right. The simple thing is, one is you have to find the God intent, connection. True. Because, you know, it was called it Salat. Salat means Ibn Rush, the great scholar of Saudi, uh, Saudi he says Salat means connection. All right. So connection with God, or divine, whatever uh, your beliefs are. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So connection. Second thing is kindness and love. Yeah. Two words. Kindness is and love. Right. Kindness means you be kind, but and love means unbreakable bound. Yeah. And last thing is accountability. These are four things now. No, no. Account. No. Kindness and love yeah. together. Right. Right. These are one word. All right. Okay. You know, you cannot be kind without love, right? Right. That's true. <laughs> so. Kindness is continuation of love, and love without love you can. And the final thing is accountability of these two actions. The deeper you go, the deeper you go of accountability of your action, the you will be successful. All right, thank you very much, sir, Sayyid Muhammad and Isa, for being with us. Lovely to be in conversation. And ladies and gentlemen, I think in this segment, what we really did come down to, in the first segment, obviously, let me do that as well. So Namaz, obviously, we sp uh, spoke about discipline. Hajj, we sp uh, sp uh, spoke about sacrifice. Fasting, we spoke about training and then abstaining yourself as well. But when we talk about the power of intent, ladies and gentlemen, it comes down to three basic rules, kindness and love, connection and accountability. Please make sure that you try to instill all of these values into your own self and make sure that you're going to be that uh, ambassador of change which will bring people together and we will continue to live in peace and harmony. Do you want to say something? Hajra? Oh, so uh, yes, uh, we have we got a very good message here is that, you know, we need to connect ourselves with the higher goods and with the higher realities out there. And then, you know, of course, we can harness the power of our intent and we can uh, do greater good in the in this world. Right. Till the next time, ladies and gentlemen, look after yourselves. Thank you very much for staying tuned to PTV World. You were watching Ramazan Pakistan. Inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow. Allah Hafiz. Thank you, sir. Pakistan, 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 Pakist